I knew I was old the day I went to an antique auction and they started bidding on me. <clears throat> Come on, that was... That wasn't funny? All right. Well, today at Laugh Again TV, we are celebrating our 200th episode of Take 5 and our 11th birthday. 11th! Woohoo! We have you to thank. If no one watched or listened or shared or responded, prayed and supported us, hey, I'd have to get a real job. And we do not want to see that happen. So thank you. We want to fill your screen with good stuff in a world where there seems to be a shortage of it. Over breakfast 20 some years ago, my friend Ben Lowell and I discovered that we shared a God-given dream of cheering people up. Hurting people, battling depression and discouragement and facing hard times. Ben believed that humor and stories about the good news of Jesus could accomplish this. So I said, well, you do it. And he said, no, you're the funny guy. You stand on the stage, I'll shine the spotlight. And he has. Ben is the visionary behind this. Well, immediately we were told it can't be done. Have you heard that? Yeah. Most humor, people said, is crude, rude, and unfunny, and this stuff is expensive to do. So we prayed together. Someone told me, you're almost 50, you should be planning your retirement. So I prayed for him after I, I punched him. <laughs> and I thought of a guy named Harland who toiled as a fireman, salesman, and cook. At 50, he began brewing his recipe. At 62, he set out to sell it. 1,000 potential clients told him he was Looney Tunes, but he didn't chicken out. And today, Colonel Sanders' iconic white suit and bow tie graced more than 25,000 KFC restaurants in 147 countries. So, if you're struggling in a noble pursuit, don't give up. Nothing worthwhile I've accomplished hasn't initially scared me half to death. Laugh Again is now on hundreds of radio stations in North America, and last year we were listened to in 117 countries. Today, I thought it'd be fun to hear from viewers and listeners. Are you ready? A teen sent me this email. I listen to you every day, so I listen to you more than I listen to my mother. <laughs> During an event in Ontario, Canada, two single gals told me they watch and listen together while sipping tea. One day I told about a single gal who specified there be no male pallbearers at her funeral. They didn't take me out when I was alive. I don't want them taking me out when I'm dead. Well, they laughed so hard that one lady's tea went down the wrong tube and she began to choke. She ended up on the floor, unable to breathe. Her friend dialed 911. The ambulance was on the way when thankfully things cleared up and the lady could breathe. I'm so sorry, I said. That was my fault. And they laughed. They said, we still watch together. One said, we're just a little more careful now. <laughs> Every day, you make my husband snort, writes Lisa. You once told your wife you were getting so old you didn't know what to wear. Should you wear boxers or briefs? And she said, uh, oh, depends. Not only did he snort, he had to clean coffee off the wall, she said. After speaking in Moncton, New Brunswick, I met a single mom and her eight-year-old son who watched Take 5 and listened to the podcast. With her thick and beautiful accent, she said, A few years ago, I heard laughter on the radio. I soon heard you talking about Jesus, and I was confused. I did not think Christians laughed. Soon we were listening every day, and we came to faith in Jesus. Man, I'm telling you, I got down on my knees. I gave that little kid a hug. Anna wrote these words, I'm 38, I tuck mom into bed each night. The roles have changed now that early onset dementia is here. But each night I turn on the program and we watch and we laugh and we cry together. She later wrote, mom passed away this morning. She loved laugh again. We grieve not as those who have no hope, she said. Thanks to you, I will always remember my mother's laughter. Oh, we thank God for such responses. This show, number 200, would be impossible without the encouragement and support of friends like you. Thanks for watching. Tell your friends about us, would you? But warn them to take it easy on the tea and coffee. So, you got it? This is the I have no idea what you're going to be doing. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh, you won't be, you'll, you'll look bad, but it'll be worth it. So thanks for watching. Tell your friends about us, would you? And, and Ben's coming in. And here's one of my friends. And then you can say, I'll say, tell us. So you're just gonna say, but. Tell your friends about us, would you? I got friends. Here's one of them. Okay. No, that didn't work. That didn't work. No, that didn't work. Okay. the script, man. Crouching tiger. Hidden. I'll be the hidden dragon. Tell your friends about us, would you? But um, wait, wait, wait. Oh, I, I started. Oh, Sorry, I didn't go back. To, yeah. It was thanks for watching. Am I saying it to you? Uh, no, you just say it to the camera. Okay. Tell your friends about us, would you? But warn the. Warn. <laughs> 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 Oops. Tell your friends about us, would you? But warn them to take it easy on the tea and coffee. It's good. Good. I mean, I don't know that we'll uh, use it. <laughs> <laughs>